leadership guy and there is mentorship failure. So people are not becoming, people are not achieving their potential, their full potential because there is a mentorship gap. And it's a challenge in our generation that we ought to overcome. If we do not overcome this challenge, we will raise up a bunch of Christians and a bunch of generational Christians who have not learned anything. They are not committed to God. They don't have values. They don't have virtues because of mentorship failure. And because of mentorship failure, any time we have crisis in homes, in families, in great institutions, in the church of God, in a Christian faith, the reason for those failures and the crisis is because of mentorship failure. If our prisons are full of young men and women, it's because of mentorship failure. If we have young ladies prostituting their bodies on the street, it's because of mentorship failure. If we have young men who rise up to fight their fathers, young women rising up to fight their mothers and have no value system, no respect for the elderly, no respect for men who have gone ahead of them, it is because of mentorship failure. There's mentorship failure. Apostle Paul said, that which you have both received, learned, heard, seen in me, do it. Don't just talk about it. Don't just say, I had lunch with this person. I'm linked up to this person. I have this person's phone on my number on my phone. He said, no, do it. And the Lord of peace will be with you. In other words, it will be obviously clear that the Lord is with you. He said, do it and the Lord will be with you. Praise God. Isaac Newton said something. Isaac Newton. A great man who did a lot of inventions. A, a one person who gave himself to mechanics and physics. Some of you have done physics. Newton's first law, second law, third law. Newton's law of mechanics. There are a lot of laws by Isaac Newton. He said, if I'm able to see farther, it is because I'm standing on the shoulders of giants. It is because I am standing on the shoulders of giants. The reason why I can see further or farther is because I'm standing on the shoulders of giants. In other words, you can see further than other people. You can see beyond your generational age mate. You can see things beyond others who are gathered because you are standing on the shoulders of other people. The importance of mentorship. That is what I'm talking about this morning. Mentorship is very important. Mentorship is what will bridge the gap between two generations. That which you have heard of me. In the presence of many witnesses, the same commit unto faithful men who would also teach others. In other words, it ensures the continuity of leadership. It ensures the continuity of experience. When I get an encounter with God, how would I be able to hand it over to the subsequent generation? I must hand it over to someone. When I have a burden, how would the burden reach the next generation? It has to be handed over to someone. So that which you have heard of me, in the presence of many witnesses, the same commit unto faithful people who will teach others. It is mentorship. Mentorship, we say discipleship. Mentorship can be likened to discipleship. It's about the same thing. If we don't overcome this challenge, a time will come one day I went to certain parts of Europe. Churches have been closed down. Churches have been converted to supermarkets. Some people have bought churches and they've converted it into supermarkets. Some churches have been converted into nightclubs. And I say, how did we get here? Mentorship failure. When there is no mentorship, we cannot bridge the gap between generations. The importance of mentorship. Who is a mentor? A mentor is an experienced person who has gone ahead in a particular field or in a particular area who is guiding another with the aim of the person achieving his or her God-given potential. So a mentor is an experienced person who has gone ahead 
in a particular area who is guiding another less experienced, less exposed, less knowledgeable with the aim of that person achieving his full potential, God-given potential. So, the mentor-mentee relationship, the aim is that the mentee must rise up. The mentor is gone ahead. Maybe the mentor is gone ahead in marriage. Maybe the mentor is gone ahead in education. The mentor is gone ahead in his profession. The mentor is gone ahead in his in ministry. So there are different fields of our lives where there are people who are experienced and they have gone ahead of us and they will give us counsel and guidance with the aim of us getting to our God-given potential. So mentorship is a, rela is a process where someone who has gone ahead much more experienced in a particular field guides, counsels another with the aim of that person who is being counseled or guided to attain to his full God-given potential. So you can have mentor in your ministry. You can have a mentor in your marriage. You can have a mentor in your profession. You can have a mentor in your business. Okay, you want to go into a particular area of business. And there are others who have gone ahead in that field. You need to receive guidance from those who have gone ahead. You need to receive counsel from those who have gone ahead so that your business can also rise from the level you find yourself to that level where the mentor is gone ahead. So that the full potential of your business can be achieved. You are a minister. You've gone. There are many who have gone ahead of you in ministry. No matter the field you may find yourself, there are people who have gone ahead of you in that field. And so, you receive counsel and guidance from those who have gone ahead of you so that that field where you find yourself in, you will be able to achieve your full potential. When you are not mentored, you become like a vagabond cat. There are people who are not mentored. They are not mentored in anything. There are Christians who have not been mentored. They do things anyhow. There is no formula for how they do things because they've not been mentored. They want to marry, but they've not been mentored. They want to be successful, but they've not been mentored. It saddens my heart that we, we go to school for so many years. We attain a degree, maybe a nursing degree, maybe first degree, maybe BSc, maybe MSc. There is some degree we achieve. And the things that matter in life, we don't pay that much attention, money, and effort to them. So we go to school. Nobody will teach, sit you down and teach you how to be successful. You go to school. Nobody will teach you on how to do well in your marriage. And I've said it over and over again. The six months marriage counseling will oftentimes take people through does not guarantee that they will have successful marriages. Because if the foundations be destroyed, what can the righteous do? The foundation has already been tempered with. The mindset, the knowledge, the exposure, the upbringing has exposed somebody to certain things. They come into the marriage with that mindset. Six months is not enough to correct it. So, just as we go to school to obtain degree and certificate, just as we go to school to graduate, how often do we enroll to a marriage school to be trained? And these are things you spend the rest of your time in. Money is a good thing. Everybody wants to solve one or two problems with money. Nobody sits us down to train us and to mentor us on how to make money. Nobody sits you down and trains you on how to raise up children. And we want to marry and have children. That is why our generation, we have challenges we must overcome. It is a mentorship crisis. It's a mentorship problem. It happens in the church, happens in the families, happens in the lives of individuals, in every institution. It is not handed over properly. The young people are in a hurry. They are not ready to learn. They are not ready to receive. They are not ready to observe. They want to be on their own. And so there is a mentorship failure. And we have to believe God 
for a breakthrough in Jesus name. So we need to be mentored. If you understand the importance of mentorship and the role mentors will play or play in our lives, you will desire to be mentored. You will desire to be mentored. Praise God. Amen and amen. In life, there are two ways to learn. There are two ways to learn. You either learn through mentors or you learn through mistakes. You either learn through mentors or you learn through mistakes. One day I was talking to a certain gentleman, Christian gentleman, who is gone ahead of me. And I was talking to him, in fact, he's like a father. He was like a father. And we were talking. And then I made a certain statement. I said, experience is the best teacher. He said, no, experience is the worst teacher. I said, you know, there are certain statements we have inherited, which has subconsciously affected us, and we don't actually understand. I said, experience is the best teacher. And he said, no, the truth is that experience is the worst teacher. If you learn from experience, you may not be able to live sometimes to even put that knowledge into practice. There are certain experiences you may not even be able to recover from them to put those lessons you have learned into practice. He took a piece of paper. He lighted a candle and he said, I want to learn whether this paper will burn if I put it into this fire or it will not burn. And then he put the paper into the fire and the paper got burnt. Then he said, I have learned by experience that when you put a paper into the fire, the paper will get burnt. But I have lost the paper. In the process of learning by experience, you will lose the things you have. You can lose important relationship. You can lose your marriage. In fact, you can lose your very life if you want to be learning by experiences. There are certain experiences that people have had already and they are willing to share and to counsel and tie with those who are coming. So there are two ways to learn. You either learn through mentors or you learn through mistakes experience so today tell yourself experience is not the best teacher wisdom is the best teacher there are those who have gone ahead of us all the mistakes have been made they have been put into books they have been put into big videos dvds on the internet credible men and women who work with god credible men and women who were outstanding in their fields of endeavor they have accomplished greatly and those knowledge has been packaged for us to receive. There is nothing new under the sun. And so you must tell yourself, I'm no more going to learn by experience. The experience can end your life. The experience can make you lose something precious to you. You may not even recover from that experience to put your knowledge into practice. So we learn through mentors. We learn through wisdom. We learn through the experiences of others, not necessarily our own experiences. If you are going to experience everything before you learn, you will grow old and you will not have learned everything. You will grow old and you will not have accomplished anything. Mentorship, the importance of mentorship. Importance of mentorship. Five important things about mentorship. Mentorship is a shortcut to success. If you want the shortcut to success, the shortest cut, the shortest route to success, it is mentorship. Mentorship is the shortest route, route, shortest way, pathway to success. Mentorship. Mentorship is the shortest pathway to success. When we talk about success, success is the continuous attainment of God's set goals for your life. That's success. So when we are talking about success, we are not talking about uh, winning lottery. We are not talking about amassing wealth. We are not talking about um, having fame. But we are talking about the continuous attainment of God's set goals for your life. And I'm saying that mentorship is the shortest pathway to achieving the continuous set goals and plans of God for your life. Hallelujah. Mentorship. Say mentorship. You need a mentor in your life. You need a mentor. If you, if you don't get a mentor, you are taking the longest route. You need a mentor. In mentorship, a mentor can learn something for 50 years. A mentor can experience something over the course of his journey. 
He will put everything together and give it to you within a short period. In mentorship, what has been achieved, what has been learned over a relatively long duration is given to you over a short duration. So, mentorship is the shortest pathway to success. I'm telling you, mentorship is the sh- If you want to be successful and you don't want to struggle, it's the shortest, the most reliable, the most proven, the most tested pathway to success. If you don't want to waste precious times, precious moments of your life, I've had people who have gone ahead of me. They told me some things and it took me sometimes seven years, ten years to realize what they told me. Mentorship is the shortest pathway in any field, whether you're in education, whether you're in ministry, whether you're into business, in every field, ministry, whatever, mentorship is the shortest pathway, most reliable, proven, tested pathway to your glorious destiny and sources. It's mentorship. It's been proven. Praise God. It's the most reliable way. When you are going on a journey, the best way is to ask those who are returning from that journey. If you want to discover the path yourself, it will take you a long time. You may be tired. You will never get to your destination. The best way to get to a destination, ask those who are returning from those places. How was the journey? How is it like? What does it feel like? Okay, at this place, what should I do? When I come into contact with it, what would I do? It is called mentorship. Mentorship is the shortest pathway to sources. Mentors are like ladders. Your mentor is like a ladder. Mentors are like ladders. If you want to get onto the top of a building, you position a ladder, you climb the ladder onto the top of the building. So mentors are like ladders. They help you to get to the top. They help you to reach and attain your full potential. The height of your mentor or the the height of your ladder will determine the kind of building you can climb. In other words, there are different types of mentors. There are mentors who can help you to climb a, 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 a floor, a ground floor. There are mentors who can help you to climb first floor. There are mentors. If you want to climb skyscrapers, then you must get mentors that are so long and tall and experienced, robust, proving, outstanding, so that you can get to the top of the skyscraper. Mentors are like ladders. All the years of experience and everything, they give it to you over a short period. Mentors are like ladders. Your mentor is more interested in your success than your comfort. Mentors are more interested in your success than your comfort. Your mentor is not going to make you feel good. He wants you to be successful. Mentors are more interested in your success than in your comfort. Your best friend, your best friend would accept your weaknesses, but your mentor will not accept your weaknesses. Your best friend will celebrate you, but your mentor will correct you. Your best friend is interested in your past, but your mentor is is interested in your future. Best friends will celebrate you. Your mentor will correct you. Your best friends will accept you the way you are. Oh, accept me the way I am. If you love me, accept me the way I am. No, your mentors love you too much to leave you the way you are. If you continue the way you are, you will not get to the place you intend to get to. So your friends will celebrate you, but your mentors will correct you. And when they correct you, it's not because they don't love you. Because they want you to get to your full potential. There are people, when they got mentors in their lives, and the mentors attempted to correct them, they withdrew and left. You cannot get to your fullest potential without having a God-given mentor in your life. Your friends will celebrate you. Your mentors will correct you. Your friends will accept you the way you are. Your mentors love you too much to leave you the way you are. Because the way you are will not get a job done. Your best friend is your cheerleader. Your best friend is your cheerleader. Cheering you on. Your mentor is your coach. 
Your best friend is your cheerleader. Oh, you are doing well. Continue. Even if you are failing, he wants to make you look good. But your mentor is your coach. No, you can't play this way. You can't do this thing. No, this is not how it is done. Praise God. Glory to Jesus. Amen and amen. Your mentor is not your confidant or your friend. Your mentor is not your confidant or your friend. Familiarity and friendship is what sometimes can destroy mentorship relationship. Water does not flow from one point to another point at the same level. There ought to be a gradient. One should be higher than the other. And then the water will flow from the higher point to the lower point. If they are the same level, the water cannot flow. Unction cannot flow from the same point to the same point. Anointing cannot flow from the same point to the same point. It takes a gradient for anointing to flow from one level to a lower level. It takes a gradient for knowledge to flow from one level to another level. So if you try to be friendship, familiar, confident with your mentor, you cannot receive much. Hallelujah. The importance of mentors. Five important things about mentorship. Number three. You must pursue a mentor. You must pursue a mentor. Look for a mentor in some aspect of your life. Look for someone who has distinguished himself. Someone who has gone ahead of you. Someone who has a heart to share. Not all mentors have a heart to share. There are mentors who are tormentors. Don't look for tormentors. Look for mentors. Saul was a tormentor to David. But Samuel was a mentor to David. There are mentors. Instead of being mentors, they rather become tormentors. They are threatened by your giftings. They are threatening by your privileges and your opportunities. And they hunt you down to destroy you. So look for mentors. Don't look for tormentors. There are mentors whose heart is not positioned to share. They don't like sharing. They don't see anybody rising up above them. They don't see anybody rising up to do the same thing they have done. They are jealous of young people who are coming up. Look for mentors. Don't look for tormentors or competitors. I say look for mentors. Pursue mentors. Don't pursue tormentors. Don't pursue competitors. Pursue mentors. Those who have gone ahead of you. And they desire to share. They desire to lift up somebody from the low point to the higher point. They desire to make an impact. They desire to share the anointing, the grace, the encounter. They desire to share. They desire to make somebody's life better. They desire to change the environment, the, the place where they find themselves. They have a heart to share. Pursue a mentor, not a tormentor, not a competitor. Saul was a tormentor to David. Saul was a competitor to David. Saul was jealous of David and what David was capable of becoming. Pursue your mentor. Your mentors will not pursue you. You have to pursue your mentors. Pursuit is a proof of passion. What you have passion for, you pursue it. Pursuit is a proof for passion. I have pursued for ministry. Passion for ministry. I pursue ministry. I have passion to be imparted by someone. I pursue my mentor. Pursue your mentors. Your mentors will not pursue you. Pursue your mentors. Elijah pursued Elijah. He said, go. He said, as long as the Lord God liveth, I'm not leaving you. When they called him, he said he was going to see his family. They said, what will I even do with you? Go, go. He said, no. He changed his mind and followed his mentor. From Bethel to Gilgal to Jordan. He said, go. He said, no, I'm not going. I'm following you. Pursue your mentor. Even Jesus, when they were leaving him, and the disciples, he asked them, will you also go away? He said, no, to whom shall we go to? You have the words of eternal life. We are sticking to you. Pursue your mentor. Pursue your mentor. There was a woman in the Bible called Ruth. Most of you know the story. Naomi, a woman going through bitterness, was going back to her hometown. And Ruth said, I'm going to follow you. He said, I don't have any more children. If I should even deliver it will take a very long time for them to be mature children, mature sons and men to marry. I don't have it. He said, listen, listen, listen. Your God shall be my God. Your people shall be my people. Where they will bury is where I will be buried. I'm pursuing you. I'm not leaving you today. I'm not leaving you tomorrow. Where they bury you is where I shall be buried. Ruth pursued Naomi. 
and Ruth's promotion and success and counsel and raising up was as a result of the guidance, the counsel that Naomi gave to Ruth. Every time you see Moses fasting and praying, Joshua will be there. Joshua was pursuing. Joshua positioned himself. Pursue your mentors. Your mentors will not pursue you. So if you are sitting down, look for an area in your life where you want to be outstanding, where you want to excel. There are people who have gone ahead of you. Pursue your mentors. Timothy, even when nobody wanted to associate with Apostle Paul, Timothy was ready to associate with the Apostle Paul, even when he was in prison. Pursue your mentors. Your mentors will not pursue you. Pursuit is a proof of passion. Number four, mentors are wisdom instructors. They are wisdom instructors. They've gone ahead of you. They have had all the experiences. A mentor in marriage. A mentor in business. A mentor in ministry. There are certain areas that you would discover that some people have received special grace and they have achieved remarkable success and they've been outstanding in those fields. In this our time, you can, you, can, you can start with their materials. There are some mentors you may not get access to. You desire, you want them to mentor you. You are pursuing them. By the way, you can pursue in this our time. We have the internet. We have books. We have DVDs. We have a lot of materials. When the devil thought he would bring a tool to destroy the faith, Christians can take advantage of it to make themselves stronger. You can take advantage of the internet. There are mentors you may not be able to get access to physically. You can get access to their materials. You can get access to their videos. You can get access to their books. So mentors are wisdom instructors. Wisdom is justified by her children. You must look at people who have good hearts. People who have produced results. It's a wisdom is justified by her children. The queen of Sheba traveled from Ethiopia to come and listen to the wisdom of Solomon. The queen of Sheba pursued the wisdom of Solomon. Wisdom is justified by her children. Look at people who have produced results. People who have stood out. Remarkable sources in certain fields. There is something about them that you admire, you love. Pray. Let God lead you to the kind of mentor. Sometimes God will give us mentors and we will reject them. He said, I will give you pastors after my own heart who will feed you with knowledge and understanding. He gave some apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers for the perfecting of the saints to do the work of ministry. So even Christians, we have our immediate mentors as our pastors, our shepherds. There is an immediate mentor for you. I always tell the people I pastor that let me tell you something. Do you know why God will give a pastor who is working well with him wisdom because of you? God, you see, there are different people from different backgrounds. And so you need certain wisdom to serve God's people and, and lead God's people. So God will give you wisdom because of the flock he has committed to your care because of the flock god has committed to my care he will give me some wisdom because of you he will give me some wisdom to be able to serve and lead his people so you see the more responsibility that is committed to you the more wisdom you must exercise so you have your immediate mentors your shepherds I always tell them that, listen, my authority, and I remember I preached this message here some years ago. The last time I, I had a program here was 2008. Yesterday when I came here, I just could remember, you know, 2008. The last program we had here, it was on the 15th of June, 2008, where I was consecrating four pastors. And then 2006 was where my commissioning consecration took place here. Mr. Anakwa was here. Some of you witnessed that ceremony. 2006. 2006. And then 2008, I consecrated four pastors. And then we launched the property fund. 2008. Right here in this auditorium, this room. 
Amen. Since then, I have preached for one or two fellowships here. But yesterday, I was thinking about how the room used to be big. Now it looks small. Amen. It looks very small. Then it looks, it used to look big. Praise God. Amen and amen. So you see, I was telling them about authority and I said, as a pastor, my authority is from two sources. My authority, number one, comes from God. And no one takes this honor unto himself. So God is the one who has given me authority. Authority to do what? To shepherd his people. You belong to God. You are his people, the sheep of his pastor. You don't belong to your pastor. You belong to God. You are God's treasured possession. You are his flock. And because you belong to God, God ordered your steps to his shepherd. He said, I will give you pastors after my own heart. So when God finds a shepherd, after his own heart, he would order the steps of his people to that shepherd. And he would give the shepherd authority. And that authority comes from God. My number one authority comes from God. He said, no one takes this honor unto himself. No man called me. My number one authority comes from God. And secondly, number two, my authority comes from your willing submission. Your willing submission. If anybody does not willingly submit, you don't have, you can't exercise authority over that person. It is not manipulation, it's not witchcraft, it's not domineering, it's not intimidation. That is witchcraft. Are you here with me? Yeah, we don't manipulate. We don't intimidate and dominate people to follow. Hallelujah. I must be closing. Sometimes God will give you a mentor and you reject the mentor. He came to his own. But his own did not receive him. So sometimes God can give us mentors and we shall we will reject the mentor. And we will, you know, life is interesting. Human beings, they like aesthetics. They like pretense. You know, when you are real, the world cannot accept you. You must be pretending. You must, you know, you can always impress people when you pretend. But you can only influence people when you are who you, the real you. Do, do you understand? And leadership and mentorship is about influence. So we are easily impressed by, you know, appearances. By the outward expression. Men looks at the, the, the outward. God looks at the heart. So men are easily swayed through impress we are impressed by pretense we are impressed by fake fake appearances we don't like people who are real but to influence people to properly mentor people you must be yourself they must know who you are they must see apostle paul did not say what you just read he said that which you are both re received and learned and seen in me do it so sometimes god will give us mentors in our lives and they will not come in the form we expected mentors to come and so we cannot receive them very well and sometimes we miss out on a great opportunity to receive mentorship we, re we, we, we miss out a mentor let me conclude mentorship and mentee mentor mentee relationship is like a bow and an arrow. It's like a gun and a bullet. The mentor is like an arrow. It's like a bow and the mentee is like a bullet. So the skills of the one holding the bow will determine how far you will go. Not all guns are the same. Some guns will travel faster and go further than other guns. So you see, the mentor is like a gun. And the gun will release the bullet. So we need mentors who will release us into our full potential. We need mentors who will prepare us 
and release us into all that God wants us to be. From this day, I want you to discard this mindset. I don't need anybody. I don't need anybody. No, you need somebody. Elijah needed Elijah. Joshua needed Moses. Timothy needed Apostle Paul. Ruth needed Naomi. You will need somebody. There is always somebody who has gone ahead. Your mentors will give you spiritual covering. There are things your mentors can easily see which you will not be able to see. Usually when you give counsel, young people will say, my own will be different. No, 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 no. I understand what I'm saying. In my little time of ministry, this February coming, I, uh, this February coming, 19 February will be 30 years since I got born again. 30 years. From the time I got born again, 15 years of age, I started preaching. To the glory of God. In this short 30 years, 15 years, I have seen some things and have come to realize that by the grace of God, I hear from God. But when I see a seasoned counselor telling me something and I think I'm hearing from God, I will not rush. I will take my time. Because I've come to realize that certain counsel I received in ministry in different aspects of my life when I thought, no, my own was better, I could hear from God, I, could, I realized that, no, I, I, I ended up making mistakes. So mentors and counselors who are of God in our lives must not be taken lightly. You need mentorship. Peter was covered. Jesus saw when the devil wanted to destroy Peter's life. He said, Simon, I have prayed for you. I have prayed for you. Mentor, even sometimes, when you want to choose a wife, and a mentor tells you, this woman is not good for you. You know when we tell them, you know what they do? They go and tell the ladies that pastor says, you are not good for me. I shouldn't marry you. So this is what we tell them. I know what I'm telling you. Go and tell him. Or I know what I'm telling you. Go and tell her. Because you think you are in love. But I'm telling you something. Most relationships, most of them, I'm not saying all of them. Most relationships, where they had godly mentors and the godly mentors told them this one is not good for you this one is not good for you when they went ahead not listening to their mentors counsel after a while it may be three years it may be two years you know when you marry one year you are on fire you're on fire morning afternoon you're on fire By the, you're on fire. By the time you get to five years, fire is coming down. They understand. Yeah. You, because you see, your hormones are still active. Your nerves are still vibrant, vibrating. Eh? It's fresh. Five years. The mentor was right. Amen. So I'm telling you that mentorship is a blessing to the body of Christ. And we all need mentors. There are people who I consider as mentors. I go to them. I ask the opinion. I ask them to pray with me. I pursue them. I travel. I buy tickets. I travel on, on, on air. I go. I go by road. I carry my car. I go. I just... I go to hear. I listen to what they will tell me. I'm listening to them on radio. I'm listening to them on TV. When I have time, I visit. When I have time, I travel. Mentors are a blessing. And I'm telling you, any decision you want to make, and somebody you know is a credible mentor, he loves you, he wants you to do well, tells you, hold on, don't do it. One day I was going to take a very important decision, and I met a certain man. I was going to ordain somebody. And he told me, don't ordain the person. And I, he said, I said, I know him. He said, people change. I said, oh, this guy, I know him very well. He will never change. Then he said, oh, even if people don't change, the people they marry can change them. I said, well, I even know the woman he's going to marry. The woman is this, the woman is that. He said, no, 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 no. Don't do it. After a long, many years, and I followed what he told me, I realized that that mentor told me the truth. One day I met a certain mentor bishop. 
We were sitting down like that. And the mental bishop told me something. When he told me, I thought my own was going to be different. We went to thank him. I went with the leaders and went to thank him. So, Bishop, thank you for gracing our occasion. You've been so much a tremendous blessing to us. We came. And then the mental bishop, he told me the same thing he told me when he visited the church. And I taught my own. Ten years. Seven to ten years. One day I was walking by the road and I said, Hey, what Bishop so so and so told me is true. Everything he told me, everything he told me. He, he's not a prophet, but every counsel he has given me actually unfolded the same way he told me. Don't joke with mentors. When God gives you a credible, godly mentor, you are blessed. This morning, we have parked in the house credible, godly, faithful mentors. I know you will listen to some and throw some away. No problem. Because some of the wisdom will be too much for you now. Later on, you will need it. You will pick it along the line. But you will be blessed. Praise God. I say you will be blessed. You will be blessed. The Lord bless you. The Lord open your eyes to look for mentors. Who can help you? Who you know they want your welfare. It is very important. They seek your welfare. All right. So I would like to end here. So I'm talking. I, I I'm, I'm dealing. I dealt with the importance of mentors, mentorship. The importance of mentorship. We have, as I told you, seasoned mentors who have gone ahead of you. I believe God has a word for you through them. And I'll be introducing them in some few minutes.